It's up to me to stand on that bridge. Love is my decision. No one else can make me forgive. And once I decide to change my mind, God will show me how. Love is my decision. My decision right here and now. Love is my decision. It's up to me to dance down that road. Love is my decision. No one else can lighten my load. Once I decide to change my mind, God will show me how. Love is my decision, my decision right here and now. Love is my decision, my decision right here and now. Thank you, Mark, and everybody on Zoom and in the sanctuary hear me? Yeah. This has been such a joy to explore uh, our, our connection through these virtual connections, through the internet, and to, to coordinate it all together. It's been a growth opportunity for all of us, but love is our decision. And that's what Unity of Bay City is all about. Not just within this community, within this community and out to the whole community, to the whole world. I'm Reverend Gail Dobert, and I am delighted to be here on this beautiful fall Sunday with you. Um, again, this is Unity of Bay City. Um, it's, it's an empowering, spiritual, uh, positive path for spiritual living. And we feel that every time we're either logged in on Zoom, we're here in the sanctuary, or we're out in our week as we pray together. Speaking of, let us pray. And as we breathe, even though it seems to be a challenge these days to breathe in a mask, we're grateful for the technology of masks, for us learning more and more about this, this interesting phenomena called COVID that we're all dancing with, that we're all trying to stay out of fear and into faith. And I think we all go move back and forth. And so right here, right now, as we open our hearts and our minds to spirit, to God, to love itself, we affirm safety. We affirm healthy immune systems for everyone. We affirm a cure for this virus. We affirm faith. We also reach out in spirit and in truth to our, uh, all of our loved ones and those we don't even know out on the West Coast as they struggle with fires. A phenomenon that is completely natural, but feels so intrusive and so scary. So we send love and comfort and safety to all of those on the West Coast. We also send that to all of uh, the world as we learn a new way of living. We are so grateful that we spend this time together to be fully aware and fully conscious of how good life is, one moment at a time. So in this very moment, in this holy instant, 
We pray this in the name and through the nature of all things holy and true. And so it is. Amen and amen. Our vision at Unity of the City is, and let's say this together with feel, let's feel this as we say this together. United in spirit and grounded in the divine, we are a beacon of light for the world. That's not a burden, that's a gift that we have. And our mission, here we are, together with feeling we are one community, looking within, reaching out, and practicing the principles of love. Practicing the principles of love. And that's, <laughs> did you see that? That cute little... <laughs> Okay, so today um, I am doing platform assistant, which means um, I usually do the talk and then we have folks who come and do um, the, the annual theme and the daily word. Well, I'm doing that today while our wonderful licensed unity teacher, Nancy Verdasco is our, I don't even wanna call her a guest speaker. <laughs> she's <laughs> she is part of this church. She's been in part of the leadership and she's, um, a fairly newly licensed Unity teacher. It's been about a year though now, huh? Yeah. So she's going to share a wonderful message with us today that I know you'll enjoy. And she'll also be doing the meditation. So uh, I wanted to just remind us that, um, but I, see, I'm not used to this part. <laughs> This year's theme, the whole year we started, is um, 20,000 ways to kindness. 20,000 ways of kindness. And see this big basket up here? We want that filled by February. And since we haven't been in the building for about five months, um, we know that you've all been keeping track, even just in your mind and on Facebook. And, you know, you can use scraps of paper and write down kindnesses, kindnesses that you have shared with others and that others have shared with you. It really brings your awareness to how important it is. And our Daily Word will talk about a real important piece, too. So in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Be kind. All right, now I'm going to share our daily word, our wonderful daily word, and it is smile, my favorite word, my favorite word, and <laughs> it just can't stand that face, can you? That's so cute. All right, so just take a nice deep breath as we share this daily word today, smile. I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Let's say that together. I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Even if a language barrier prevents me from understanding another's words, I know that most people will respond to a friendly smile. Even behind a mask, you can see eyes that smile. My smile can convey goodwill, communicate delight from, unexpected, from an unexpected blessing, or inspire awe at the sight of a star-filled night. A child not yet able to talk shares love and joy and, and quite effectively with just a sunny smile. I feel happy when other smiles at, others smile at me. This friendly, welcoming gesture reminds me that we are all one in spirit. Smiling at my reflection in a mirror, I see the light that shines from me. I feel a quickened awareness of divine love and joy that are present everywhere as I realize how simply and beautifully my smile can express that love and joy without any need for words. 
and from Numbers 6.25, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Let's share our affirmation again. I share the joy and love of God when I smile. All right, so behind all those masks, let's see a smile. Here we go. <laughs> all right and now we are going to move into our time of meditation with nancy Verdasco. thank you nancy thank you reverend gail i share the joy and love of god when i smile what a beautiful affirmation to take into our time of meditation together Let's say it again together. I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Oh. Now just settle back into your chairs. Take everything off your lap. Close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Feel the chair beneath you, supporting you, allowing you to relax totally into a comfortable position. Feel any tension draining from your body, from the top of your head, down your arms, to the ends of your fingers, down your body to your hips, and all the way down your legs to the tip of your toes. Fully relaxed, fully relaxed. Peace, be still. Peace is ours. Peace that passes understanding. In the quiet resonance of this peaceful moment, we can enter our heart space, the inner sanctum, the holy of holies, where we encounter our divine source. Here in this radiant and beautiful space, we feel ourselves expand into the infinite, expressing what we truly are, God at this point in time and space. Feel the stretch as your soul relaxes into this limitless beingness. In this moment, all the monkey chatter is stilled and we become the observers in the one chair, observing above the drama and chaos our senses would have us believe is the truth. But it really isn't, is it? We know better than that, don't we? In our heart of hearts, in the home of the divine within us, we believe that we are one with God and with each other. Although sometimes our senses, our common sense, may tell us otherwise, may tell us that the spiritual realm is a myth of wishful thinking. We know in the depths of our soul what the truth really is. God is, we are, and all is well. Think now of some of those moments when you doubted the reality of the spiritual, when your head was convinced it was all an illusion. See yourself in those moments, a frightened and confused child. Now gently reach out to that scared little one and whisper to them, oh, come on now. You know that isn't true. You know you are a child of the infinite. 
You've just forgotten it in the moment. You are limitless in all things. Especially, you are limitless in your belief, in your faith. Grasp hold now of the power within you. Reach for the power of faith. The power to believe with conviction. This power is always working within you. But you need to choose how it will work. What it will believe. Choose now. Choose the truth. Feel that truth spread its wings within you. Radiating from you. In the silence. In the silence, we have just experienced what we truly are, an infinite spiritual being full of power. In our most human moments, we now know we can remind ourselves of this power and sustain our faith to believe in what is the highest truth we know. As we use this power, we grow and evolve, ever expressing more of the Christ within, manifesting and changing ourselves and the world around us. And we are so grateful for this evolution of ourselves, our communities, the whole human race, as we return to this place and time, we carry the awareness of this power with us, knowing we can tap into it whenever the need arises, ready to fully express the truth of our being. And so it is. Amen. Now Ron will share with us a wonderful song, Pour Yourself in Me. Good morning, Unity of Bay City. Can you all hear me? Okay. Pour yourself in me. Pour yourself into my heart. Whoa. Wonderful spirit, pour yourself 
within me. Pour yourself into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Pour your love in me. Pour your love into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Pour your love in me. Pour your love into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Shine your light in me. Shine your light into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Shine your light in me. Shine your light into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Pour yourself in me. Pour yourself into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Pour yourself in me. Pour yourself into my heart. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Whoa, wonderful spirit. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much. And that's a great song to lead us into the next installment of our series on learning to love ourselves. In the last two lessons, Reverend Gale has shared with us some aspects of the book, Learning to Love Yourself by Gay Hendricks. Learning to love who and what we are is crucial to our spiritual development. And Reverend Gale first discussed reaching out for help in our quest for self-love. She talked about ask, ask, seek, knock, A-S-K, clear, in the assurance that we would find what we sought. We can more fully realize the preciousness we are when we seek within for the love we think comes from outside ourselves. Then last week, Reverend Gale talked about finding wisdom in our relationships with each other. When we grant ourselves the gift a full acceptance of each other and ourselves. She illustrated this point by reading a lovely book called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse in the course of a sweet interlude of storytelling. We saw that our main purpose here is to love each other and most importantly, ourselves. Now this week, I thought I would continue the experience of storytelling. Jesus frequently used that method of telling parables to his followers to help them understand some of the deep concepts he was trying to get them to remember. And he used the most commonplace things in life as examples so that folks would get the message. We can often find our greatest lessons in many unexpected places. So I often look at some kind of offbeat sources for my inspirations. I've looked at rock music. I have looked at comic strips. This time I came upon a source of inspiration purely by accident as Jack and I searched for some entertainment for our grandson Jackson. We discovered a wonderful little book called The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Deason. And it was only after I read it with Jackson that I realized what a wonderful, simple lesson it contained on how we can get caught up in what we think 
is the truth about ourselves until someone helps us understand who and what we really are. So I'll invite you to settle back into your chairs as we read the story of the pout pout fish. by Deborah Deason. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend, nice thought, Mrs. Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hulky, bulky sulking is an unattractive trait. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish. But instead of saying, hey, she plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. Mr. Fish, 
is most astonished. Mr. Fish is just aghast. Mr. Fish is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and speaks at last. My friend, said Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss-kiss fish with a kiss-kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch and smooch and smooch and smooch and smooch. The end. Isn't that a fun little story? And how well does it reflect what really happens in our lives? Let's take a closer look. Mr. Fish is convinced that he is what the circumstances of his birth have declared him to be. Sad and pouty, spreading dreary wearies all over the place. How many times have we convinced ourselves, me included, that we are limited by the conditions of our lives, that we are the victims of our circumstances. And on evidence just as slim as Mr. Fish's, we look in the mirror at our five, what our five senses tell us instead of going within to find the real treasure. Now, if we're open to them, we might have wonderful friends like Mr. Fish who offer us their words of wisdom to try to help us understand how wonderful we really are. Ms. Clam, who tries to wake Mr. Fish up a bit, only he protests that he is just what he is. How many times have we used that excuse? Oh, it's just me. That's just the way I am. You know, one of my favorite authors, Lucy Montgomery, who wrote the Anne of Green Gables series, talks about people who expect others just to put up with some bad habits. If you had a friend, she says, who went around pinching folks, then said, oh, you mustn't mind that. That's just me. Would you tolerate it? Of course not. If you were a true friend, you'd lovingly look at the person and tell them, quit it with the pinching. That's not nice. Now, in just that way, Ms. Clam tries to coax Mr. Fish to give up his pout. And just like us, Mr. Fish finds some excuse for his behavior. Next, Mr. Jelly tries to tell Mr. Fish he'd really like a friendlier greeting from him. But Mr. Fish passes the buck again by saying, it's not up to him. Well, Mr. Fish, if not you, then who? But Mr. Fish can, prefers to consider himself the victim of his genetics. Mrs. Squid is the next friend who comes along, and she's a bit more blunt letting Mr. Fish know that his down mood is bringing her down too. And again, Mr. Fish dodges, saying he doesn't have any choice in the matter. It can seem that way to us too. If that sometimes we don't have any choice about how we behave, when the truth is we can always choose what we believe and how we act. Mr. Eight, the octopus, is even more blunt than Mrs. Squid, with just about as much effect, unfortunately. Mr. Fish just talks about his destiny and swims off with no change in his attitude. Even so, these friends are all true friends because they remain his friends, even when Mr. Fish won't listen. Until finally, someone comes along, a total stranger to Mr. Fish and his crowd. And maybe that's the way it has to be sometimes. 
a hitherto unknown person can have a greater impact than close friends. And even more interestingly, this character says nothing. She simply demonstrates through her actions more clearly than any words could say what Mr. Fish really is. He is designed to love. The great thing is, this action accomplishes what all the words of Mr. Fish's friends could not do. It makes him stop and think. He takes the time to really consider that, what that action meant to him and how he thought about himself. Then, having given the matter honest consideration, he decides what's true for him and changes his mind to go on to live a much happier life of love. This is us. The divine within us is love. We are love, and we are born to love both each other and most especially ourselves. So let's all take an honest look at ourselves in the coming week and decide to recognize who we really are, just like Mr. Fish. And instead of saying namaste at the end of my lesson, let me just say, smooch. God bless you all. Back to you, Reverend Gail. Gail needs to unmute her mic on her computer. Yeah. Thank you. All right, here. I'll put my shield on. Smooch. <laughs> oh, I think that's been one of the hardest things about this whole pandemic, hasn't it? Being able, not being able to hug the people that you live with and um, smooch. So that was wonderful. Thank you, Nancy. I love that. So right now we are going to show our love for the spiritual community and in, in, uh, through our financial gifts and tithes to this ministry. If you're joining us for the first time today, let us be this gift, our gift to you. And there's different ways you can contribute during this um, time. You can, if you're here in the sanctuary, there is a little basket in the middle. If you'd like to leave your tithes or love offerings there, you're welcome to. You can also mail them to the church. You can drop them by during the week. You can um, set it up with your financial institution and um, tithe or give your love offering that way. And there's also a PayPal button on our website. So we love and accept your love. And that's what, you know, sometimes we forget that money is an expression of gratitude. It's not the whole picture by any means, by any means, but this spiritual community thrives on all different kinds of love and service. So let's just take a moment and together we'll make our um, affirmation for our offering together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, I am enough, I have enough, there is enough. And so we bless all of these offerings 
to this community. And we know that abundance flows in many ways, in all directions, and there is enough for all. Amen. Now we've got some special music by one of our favorites, Daniel Neymar. Um, one of his CDs, Sacred Love, or Yes I Am is the name of it. I am. music career he came to a couple a church that i was at and all of us mothers wanted our daughters to marry him <laughs> he was single at the time and so were they <laughs> but he is married now i didn't think i had he has a child but he's still he's just such a love such a love so we'll bring this service together all of the wonderful 
components come together as we go out into our week. And we will share together our prayer for protection. And um, okay. then we'll Around this video out. and pick up your video's commercial license right now. Or you can just keep watching this video because I'm going to show you how you can do it. Even if you've got zero technical knowledge and no experience whatsoever when it comes to creating high converting video content. YouTube, I think, going on. <laughs> All right. And we'll put the prayer for protection up now. Or not. <laughs> Do we have it? There we go. You know, all in divine and perfect order. It absolutely is. So why don't we stand up and share this together. Ready? <laughs> the light of God surrounds me. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love of God. The power of God protects me. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. All is well. Amen. And you're welcome to have a seat. Um, I don't think we have the peace song quite ready this, this time, but we will get back to it. Um, Nancy, and so, I want to thank share you. Few yeah. Unity thank you for joining us at Unity of Bay City today, whether it's on Zoom, in the sanctuary, in our parking lot, wherever. We're happy to share this time with you. So, let's take a quick look at some upcoming events. Fall Faith, just around the corner. Oh, my word. We'll be having our study circles on Thursday evenings at 6 30 p.m., beginning on October 8th. What does that say? It says October 1st. Okay, God, no, it says October 8th right there. Okay. okay. This year, our book of choice is Living Originally by Robert Brummett. You can order the book at smile.amazon.com or from your favorite bookseller, and you can call or email the office to sign up for study circles. And I'd like to remind folks that we have an opportunity here for you to love and serve by being a circle facilitator. We need, still need a few, and we'd like to see uh, answers in place by October 1st. And there are options for the circle, weekly circle meetings. You can do it on Zoom, you can do it at UBC, or you can do it in your home, however you feel most comfortable. And we will be so glad to have you for our facilitators giving of your love and service. Thank you. Reverend Gale. Thank oh, you. Oh, I just covered your part. No, you that's do good. <laughs> Would you like to do the drum circle then? <laughs> sure. And, and I just want to add a PS to what Nancy just said too, is don't be, if you've never been a facilitator of a small group, it's a study group. It's, we've got everything outlined in from the book and it's just kind of a matter of keeping the, the group on task and, and the time. And, and if you've never done it, I invite you to give it a try. And if you have, then you know, and you can share with others that it's, it's a, just a wonderful way to serve. And like Nancy said, there's many ways to do that. We've got another drum circle. We had one on just Friday night. It was awesome. We had like 22 people here. And we had, all right, I'll count on that, Jerry. <laughs> we did have, um, we had a bonfire. It did get a little chilly. But I think once people realize it's going to be chilly, we have to bring more blankets and stuff. But we had the fire going, and um, it was great. We had folks who were had never... Uh, even heard of Unity of Bay City, uh, come with some friends. So everyone's welcome. Y'all come. And um, we also have um, October 31st, Halloween. It's going to be a full moon. It's the blue moon, once in a blue moon. Halloween 
ser- a celebration. We'll have a bonfire, we'll have drumming, we'll have s'mores, we'll maybe do some howling at the moon when it rises. You just know it's not going to be a cloudy night. How many knows, how, how many people know what a blue moon is? See, I thought I knew, but my sister, my older sister, who was a teacher for 25 years, she kind of caught me on it. I'm like, well, I thought I knew what it was. She said, it's because there's two moons, two full moons in, in October. And the second one of the month is always called the blue moon. That's why the phrase once in a blue moon, because there's two in a month. That doesn't happen. And rarely does it happen on Halloween night. So we get to howl at the moon. We get to dance and drum and have s'mores. And, and it'll all be outside, but we may, we'll have the building open for, for um, uh, the restroom and for people to warm up a little bit. For that, we're going to have trunk or treat. We're going to have our congregants in the parking lot with their cars and candy. And instead of people getting out, their cars. Anybody from Bay City and beyond comes to, to trick or treat, trunk or treat. Our folks will bring it to their car. Everybody will be masked and <laughs> who knows what the masks will look like. Wow. Oh, we're having a mask, a mask um, decorating contest. So I wear one of these most of the time and I'm not because now because I'm behind this shield, but I thought of some cool things I could do with this, huh? Put some uh-huh. bling on there. You know, the possibilities are endless. So decorate your masks. Wear a costume if you want. Don't wear a costume. Wear something, but don't wear a costume if you don't want to. And so it's going to be fun. It's going to be a beautiful evening. Let's just affirm that right now. Right. Yeah. And, and I had one other little last minute thing. I uh, was asked by someone who needs who's working on uh, his license unity teacher credentialing if i could do an SEE, see class which is a credit class spiritual enrichment and education spiritual enlightenment and enrichment i think enlightened we defer don't exactly remember what the e stands for yeah but, but it's an <laughs> educational program through unity that you get credits and and earn either be a license unity teacher or minister and <clears throat> Anyway, I said, sure. So this Saturday, um, I'm starting the class. It's self-care, and it goes for five weeks. So it starts on Saturday the 26th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a Saturday. And um, I just wanted to let everybody know that you're welcome to to call the office and sign up. If you want to do it for credit, it's $45 that goes to UWM. That goes directly to them. I I mail it in to them. And if you don't want to do it for credit, just show up and enjoy it. I think it's going to be a fun class on uh, self care, and it goes really well with our theme right now. This month has been on self love, so we can move right into that. If you're if you're interested, just call the office and we'll get you signed up. So it'll be a Zoom class. So it's it's a wonderful class. I've had it. They. Uh, their theme is physical, mental, and spiritual care for yourself. And, yeah. and it's, it's got some really great tips. Does it? <laughs> That's the word from on high, folks. That's the word from on high. <laughs> so we, we call it good and very good. Does anybody have any announcements they'd like for me to share or... Um, Anything oh, I, I wanted to say that um, we collected eight. Hello? There we go. We collected um, eight. No? No. Now. Okay. We collected eight gallons of blood at our blood drive on uh, last Thursday. Eight, eight, and pint, eight pints. Pints, not gallons. Sorry. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Uh, eight pints of blood and that means we help 24 people potentially so wonderful job everyone wonderful job for jack and nancy Mm. to be here and do that reverend gail and everybody listening i just want to um ask reach out and ask about the halloween trunk or treat 
If you guys, oh. Are you unmuted? <laughs> We're unmuted. Now I'm good? Can you hear me now? Perfect, thank you, sorry about that. I just wanna reach out to everyone. Um, I do have like three or four cars already lined up that are wanting to decorate their trunks or their backs of their tr uh, trucks and um, pass out candy, but I would love to have, you know, 15 cars out there. Uh, I think that our parking lot can handle that. So if you are interested in decorating your car, the back of your truck, or if you don't have a car and you wanna decorate a tent and work out of the tent, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but uh, what we're asking is if you're doing a, a vehicle for trunk or treat that you will uh, also, also donate your candy and decorations for your vehicle and be there to pass it out. Um, you know, we will make sure that everything else is done. And if you want to work on the committee of setting it up and have any, anything to do with that, and I do also have a few people who are, are working with that as well, um, but just, just holler out to me. I'd like to make this a really uh, big production. I know Julie and Kevin are working on the radio station so we can have Halloween stories and music through the radio station as well. Um, so anyway, holler at me if you want to help. We'd love it. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Tracy. All the blood and, and trick or treat. Um, I'm going to step out. Can Zoom still see me? Yeah, hear you. We can see you on the big um, overall view with AV booth. Wow. Can't hear you very well. My, I have a little orange car, and my daughter's already used to sketch out. We're going to be doing something. <laughs> Thanks for everything else.